In this video, we will discuss how to find intervals of concavity and points of inflection from a graph. I also have a second video for 5.6 on how to do that when you're given an equation or other information instead. This is a very heavily tested topic on the AP exam, so I included a ton of examples. Feel free to skip around to the ones that you want to see. Let's start by defining concave up, concave down, and points of inflection. If we take a look at this graph here, this graph is concave up from this point right here all the way up until here. Concave up just means that the curve looks like this. When a function is concave up, f prime, its first derivative, is increasing. Because if we take a look at the slopes of the tangent lines, here it was negative, here it was zero, here it was positive, and if we take a look at how it's changing on even smaller intervals, here it was zero, here it was maybe one half, here it was one, and then it's getting steeper as we go up. So f prime, the first derivative, is increasing. This means that f double prime of x, the second derivative, is greater than zero because the slope of the slopes of the tangent lines is positive. When the graph is concave down, that just means that the original function f looks like this. So our graph here is concave down all the way from here to here. When a function is concave down, f prime, the first derivative, is decreasing. So take a look here. We originally had a very steep positive slope. Maybe the slope was 10, and then it was 5, and then it was 3, and then it was 1 half, and now it's 0 right here at that horizontal tangent line. And then the slopes turn negative as soon as we pass that relative maximum. So the slopes of the tangent lines, or f prime of x, is decreasing. This means that f double prime of x, the second derivative, is less than 0. So what is happening right here, where the graph is changing from concave up to concave down? or concave down to concave up in this case? Well, that's called a point of inflection. Points of inflection are points where f changes from concave up to concave down or vice versa. That means that these are also points where f prime, the first derivative, changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Because when it's concave up, the first derivative is increasing. When it's concave down, the first derivative is decreasing. Additionally, f double prime, the second derivative, changes from positive to negative or vice versa because when f is concave up, f double prime of x is greater than zero, so it's positive. So f double prime of x has to change from positive to negative or vice versa. And you might wonder, well, why do we have three separate definitions for points of inflection? Well, you have to justify your answer. If you are on an FRQ, you have to justify your answer using information from the given graph or the equation. So if they give you information about f prime, like a graph of f prime, you have to use f prime to justify your answer. You can't start talking about f double prime. If they give you information about f double prime, though, you must use f double prime to justify your answer. So you would have to say something like, there's a point of inflection at x equals 3, because f double prime of x changes from positive to negative at x equals 3, or something like that. But the important thing is you have to use the correct function or the correct derivative in order to justify your answer. Here are some proper justifications that we could use. If we were trying to justify a point of inflection and we were given information about f double prime of x, we would say f has a point of inflection at x equals blank because f double prime of x changes signs at x equals blank. If we were given information about f prime of x though, we would say f has a point of inflection at x equals blank because f prime of x changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa at x equals blank. So how do you know which one to use? Well, it all depends on which one you are given. If you're given information about f double prime, you justify with f double prime and vice versa. f prime, you justify with f prime. For concavity, we would say f is concave up on the open interval from a to b. A function is always concave up or down on an open interval because f double prime of x is greater than zero on that interval. F is concave up on the open interval from A to B because F prime of X is increasing on that interval. So if we were given F double prime, we would use this justification. If we were given F prime, we would use this justification. Given the graph of F prime of X shown to the right, find the points of inflection of F and the intervals on which F is concave up and concave down. So they are giving us the graph of F prime, but they're asking these questions about the original function F. We know that points of inflection occur when f double prime changes signs or when f prime changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Since we're given a graph of f prime, we're going to look for the increasing decreasing one. So at what values of x is this graph here changing from increasing to decreasing or vice versa? Well, it's decreasing here and then it changes at x equals negative two, it's increasing and then it changes at x equals zero and then it's decreasing. This means that we have points of inflection at x equals negative two and x equals zero.
F has points of inflection at x equals negative 2 and x equals 0 because F prime of x, this graph right here, changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa at those points. That's a proper justification for the points of inflection. Now we're asked on what intervals is F concave up and F is concave down. Well, we know that f is concave up when f double prime of x is greater than zero, so when f prime of x is increasing. And since we're given the graph of f prime of x, we just need to look for when is this graph increasing. Well, it's increasing on the interval from negative two to zero. So we will say that f, the original graph, is concave up on the open interval from negative two to zero, and then do our proper justification. f is concave up on the open interval from negative 2 to 0 because f prime of x is increasing on that interval. Now to do our justification for where the original function f is concave down, we will simply look for where f prime of x is decreasing. So it looks like f prime of x is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2 and 0 to infinity. So I will do my justification for that. f is concave down on the open interval from negative infinity to negative 2 and the open interval from 0 to infinity because f prime of x is decreasing on those intervals. Given the graph of f double prime of x shown to the right, find the points of inflection of f and the intervals on which f is concave up and concave down. So this is almost identical to the previous problem except instead of being given a graph of f prime of x, we are being given a graph of f double prime of x. So our justifications are going to be going with f double prime of x because f double prime of x is positive or negative or changing signs. So to find the points of inflection, we are going to look for where f double prime of x changes signs. f double prime of x, it looks to be changing signs at x equals zero. And you might be tempted to say, oh, it's changing signs at x equals four as well because f double prime of four is equal to zero. However, because it didn't actually change from negative to positive, it just went from negative to zero, we can't say that it changed signs there. So x equals zero will be our only point of inflection. f has a point of inflection at x equals 0 because f double prime of x changes signs at x equals 0. Now to find the intervals on which f is concave up and concave down, we know that f is going to be concave up on the intervals where f double prime of x is greater than 0. f double prime of x is greater than 0 on the interval from negative 3 to 0. f is concave up on the open interval from negative 3 to 0 because f double prime of x is greater than 0 on that interval. Now to find the interval where f is concave down, we will look for where f double prime of x is less than zero. That's going to be on the open interval from zero to four. f is concave down on the open interval from zero to four because f double prime of x is less than zero on that interval. The figure above shows the graph of f prime, the derivative of the function f, on the closed interval from negative one to five. The graph of f prime has horizontal tangent lines at x equals one and x equals three. The function f is twice differentiable with f of 2 equaling 6. Find the x-coordinate of each of the points of inflection of the graph of f. Give a reason for your answer. So since we're given a graph of f prime, we're going to need to use f prime to justify our answer. And we know that points of inflection occur when f prime of x changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, also known as the relative extrema of f prime. So we can see that f prime changes from increasing to decreasing at x equals 1, and it changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals 3. This means that we have points of inflection at x equals 1 and x equals 3. f has points of inflection at x equals 1 and x equals 3 because f prime of x changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa at these points. Let f be a function defined on the closed interval from negative 5 to 5 with f of 1 equaling 3. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f, consists of two semicircles and two line segments, as shown above. So they are giving us the graph of f prime here, but they're going to ask us some questions about the original graph of f. On the open interval from negative 5 to 5, find all values of x at which the graph of f has a point of inflection. Justify your answer. We know that f is going to have points of inflection when f prime changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So at x equals negative 4, the graph of f prime changes from increasing to decreasing. And then at x equals negative 1, the graph of f prime changes from decreasing to increasing. And then at x equals 2, the graph of f prime changes from increasing to decreasing. So we have points of inflection at x equals negative 4, x equals negative 1, and x equals 2. f has 
points of inflection at x equals negative 4, x equals negative 1, and x equals 2 because f prime changes from increasing to decreasing at x equals negative 4 and x equals 2, and f prime changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals negative 1. If you want, instead of saying all of this stuff about the increasing and decreasing at the specific points, you can say because f prime changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa at those points. That's an acceptable way to justify it as well. For part C, we're looking for the intervals on which the graph of f, the original graph, is concave up and has positive slope. When we talk about the graph of f having positive slope, f will have positive slope or be increasing when f prime is greater than zero. So we know that f prime is going to have to be greater than zero, and that occurs on the interval from negative five to negative three and the interval from one to four. That is where f is increasing. And then when we talk about where f is concave up, f is going to be concave up when the graph of f prime is increasing. And f prime is increasing, and we only need to look on the intervals that we already identified because we're looking for intervals where both of these things are happening. f is increasing on the interval from negative 5 to negative 4, and it's increasing from negative 1 to 1, but we don't care about that because that's negative, so we can't include that. And it's also increasing on the interval from 1 to 2. So the graph of f is both concave up and has a positive slope on the interval from negative 5 to negative 4 and the interval from 1 to 2. f is concave up and has positive slope on the open interval from negative 5 to negative 4 and the open interval from 1 to 2 because f prime is increasing and positive on those intervals. Increasing is our justification for why it's concave up. Positive is our justification for why it has positive slope. The graph of the continuous function f prime shown in the figure above has x intercepts at x equals negative 2 and x equals 3 times the natural log of 5 thirds. And then we actually don't need this part of the information for part a. On the open interval from negative 4 to 4, find all the values of x at which the graph of f has a point of inflection. Justify your answer. We're given the graph of f prime here, so we are going to be looking for points where the graph of f prime is changing from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, because those will be our points of inflection of the original function f. So it looks like f prime is changing from decreasing to increasing at x equals negative 2, and then increasing to decreasing at x equals 0, and that's it. It's decreasing for the rest. This means that the original function f has points of inflection at x equals negative 2 and x equals 0. f has points of inflection at x equals negative 2 and x equals 0 because f prime changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa at those points. You could also say because f prime changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals negative 2 and f prime changes from increasing to decreasing at x equals 0. That would also be a proper justification. The graph of f double prime, the second derivative of the function f, is shown for the closed interval from negative 2 to 3. On which interval or intervals is the graph of f concave up? Well, since we're looking at the graph of the second derivative, we know that f is going to be concave up when the second derivative is greater than zero or positive. f double prime seems to be greater than zero on the interval from negative two to three and four to five. So this means that b is the correct answer. Let f be the function given by f of x equals the sine of five x minus the natural log of two x. At which value or values of x on the open interval from 0 to 1 does f change concavity? So changing concavity means that we have a point of inflection. The places where f changes concavity, those are the points of inflection of f. So how do we find the points of inflection? Well, there are two ways that we could do it, and I'm going to walk you through both of them. One way is that we could look at f prime of x and then determine where is f prime of x changing from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. In order to look at the graph of f prime, I first need to plot the function f. So I'm going to do that by hitting the y equals button, and then I can enter the sine of 5x minus the natural log of 2x. And then for the function y2, that's where I want to plot the first derivative, f prime of x. So I'm going to hit the math 8 button to get d dx, and then type in the x there, of, and I want it to take the first derivative of the function y1. So I will hit vars, scroll over to y vars, hit function, and then I want it to take the function y1 in there. So now it's taking d dx of y1, and you want it to show up for all x, so you'll just hit x equals x, and then hit enter. 
and then I only want my derivative function to be actually graphed on that window. So I'm going to go hover over the equal sign of the original function that I put in and then just hit enter to unselect the equal sign. That will make only the y2 function be graphed. And then I want my window to be from 0 to 1 because it says on the open interval from 0 to 1. And then I can hit graph. Now, this isn't quite zoomed out enough because I can't see if I have a relative minimum or a vertical asymptote right there. So I'm going to have to change my window. I'm going to change my y min to negative 10 and my y max to 10 and then graph it again. And now I have my function of f prime. So remember, f changes concavity or f has points of inflection when f prime of x is changing from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So I know that I'm going to have two points. I'm going to have one right there and one right there. So I think my answer is going to be choice C, but I'm just going to verify that it's actually those points by doing second calculate, and then I want to calculate the minimum on a certain interval. So I'm going to move my left bound over to the left of that minimum right there, move my right bound over to the right, hit enter, hit enter again, and then hopefully it's going to tell me what that value right there is. And it says that is 0 0.606, so rounded, that's 0 0.607. This means that 0.607 is one of the points of inflection of the original function f. To find the other one, I will find what is the maximum on this, on this little window here to find that point. So I will do second, calculate, scroll down to maximum, and then scoot the left bound to the left of the maximum that I'm trying to find. And then scoot the right bound to the right, hit enter one more time, and it says it is 0.2136, and you round and you get 0.214. This means that c is the correct answer. If you want some more practice on graphing calculator work, I have a separate video on that. Now, if you want to stick around, I will show you another way that you can find this using the second derivative instead. So if you prefer to look at the second derivative and determine when is the second derivative changing from negative to positive or vice versa, you can also do that. All that you have to do is input a third function here. So y3, we're going to take d dx of y2, taking the derivative of the derivative to get the second derivative. So you would hit math 8 d dx and then vars, y vars, first function, and then, but you're, you're trying to get y2 in there. So you would hit two, and now it's going to take the derivative of y2 for all x. Now I only want the third function, y3, to show up. So I will unselect the equal sign on y2, and then I will have it graph my function. Now we are looking at the second derivative here. So the points of inflection of the original graph f are going to be when the second derivative is changing from negative to positive or vice versa, changing sign. So I will say second, calculate the zero, and then I will scoot my left bound to the left of this zero right here. And then I will scoot the right bound to the right of where I want it, and then hit enter one more time. And it is giving me that the zero is going to occur at 0.214, which is exactly what we got when we did it with f prime. Now let me calculate the other zero. I will do second, calculate the zero, scoot the left bound to the left of this zero now, and then scoot the right bound to the right, hit enter, hit enter again, and then it's going to generate my other zero or my other point of inflection of the original function f. And it says it is 0.607, which is perfect. That aligns perfectly with what we got when we looked at f prime. So either of those are valid methods that you can use.